First, a story of financial success by selling goods that don't really exist. No, this isn't a story about a scam artist. It's about an entrepreneur who thought outside the box. Last year, Americans spent more money on computer games than going to the movies. Some of these games allow you to become a character in a fantasy world. In these worlds, you can slay monsters and cast spells. You can also make real money. Bob Kimblinger of Raleigh County certainly does. He buys and sells virtual items like weapons, real estate, and gold. And he makes a good living doing it. Scott Finn has more. Bob Kiblinger is living the good life. He lives with his wife and young son in a leafy subdivision near Glade Springs Resort. He won't give his exact salary, but he says he's making well over six figures. Business is so good that he's building a larger home next door. And he only has to work two to three hours a day to pay for it all. It started in 1998 when Kiblinger had a simple idea. One night I was laying in bed thinking, I was thinking, you know, if people will buy baseball cards, which really, a baseball card is a piece of cardboard, it doesn't really have any intrinsic value, but it's a sign of value because of supply and demand and scarcity. Uh, why wouldn't they buy these items? Because in the game, these items are hotly you know, contested. I mean, when someone's going to, when someone will play a game for, you know, 200 hours to get an item, you know, obviously there's a pretty, high, pretty large demand for that item. So just sell the heck of it. I, put some of my items that I owned up on eBay and they sold. Kiblinger was one of the first people to figure out how to make real money by trading in virtual goods, the gold, real estate, and other property that people earn by playing fantasy computer games. To understand what Bob Kiblinger does, you need to understand how these games work. Take World of Warcraft, a game played by 12 million people worldwide. First, you become a character in the game. I mean, you can, you know, you can be yourself, which or you can be a, a version of yourself on steroids, you know, or you can be someone totally different than who you really are. You know, you can be a really timid, shy person in, in real life, and in the game you're this boisterous, you know, guild leader. You enter the game as your character and meet other characters like you. You can join forces and go on an adventure together, such as slaying a monster. That earns you some virtual gold. Or you can earn gold by going to work as a blacksmith or a miner. You can use your online money to buy things inside the game, such as real estate or weapons. It takes a lot of time and skill to earn your gold this way. Kiplinger discovered that there were gamers out there who wanted a head start. They were willing to spend real money for fake gold. Meanwhile, other game players who got tired of the game wanted out. Kiplinger would buy all their online possessions, repackage them, and sell them for a profit. The first account I bought was in Cincinnati. and. Um, a guy lived in Cincinnati as well, and so I made an arrangement to meet him in the Taco Bell parking lot, and I handed him a check for $1,000, and he had a neat piece of paper with his account information on it. <laughs> it was pretty, that's another leap of faith because I could have got home and the account information might not have worked, but instead it worked, and um, I broke it all off in that first account. That's the first account I ever bought, and it cost me $1,000, and I sold all the items on the account for $15,000 when, when I was done with it. Kiblinger grew up in Beckley. His dad was a mechanic, his mother a nurse. After he graduated from college, he became a chemist at Procter & Gamble, where he helped develop new versions of Febreze. But he soon grew bored with that life. Kiblinger gave up his wife, his house, and his career in Cincinnati and moved back to Beckley to try to make it as an online trader. Well, that was an adventure because, <laughs> you know, I'd been on my own for, at that time for about 10 years, and um, I wanted to move back to West Virginia, and I didn't have the money to buy a house. And... Um, so I ended up moving back to my parents' basement for about two years, and you know that was a really um, humbling experience because you're used to being on your own, you have your own house, and and to do that it was a pretty big you know leap as well because if this wouldn't have worked out, I might still be there right now. So, but his business took off, and business was very good. Kiblinger soon became famous or infamous, depending on your point of view, as one of the largest traders in virtual goods at least until the big boys found out that there was real money in what he was doing. Whereas I was more of a large-scale mom-and-pop shop, you know, these guys came in with, you know, millions and millions of dollars, so he had to compete on a whole different level. And they, they, so they really created the whole gold farming. Gold farming is when people play an online game for the sole purpose of earning gold and then sell it for real money. In places like China and Russia, thousands of young people play these online games for a few dollars a day. They kill the same monsters over and over again just to earn gold. Their employers sell that gold to online brokers in countries with lax regulations like the Bahamas. 
These brokers then sell it to online retailers like Kiblinger. They call it a sweatshop and things like that, but it's really not because, I mean, these are kids who probably, you know, probably college age kids and they're playing a game and they're making a wage that their father's making doing really hard labor. You know, they're making the same wage and they're in an air conditioned office building playing a computer game. Kiblinger has a community of online gaming fans who have bought from him for years. He even holds contests where players dress up as their favorite characters. This is the grand prize winner. Wait, that's not the grand prize winner. Let me find it. Here, let's take a look at this one. This is, this is her character in the game right here. And then here's, the, here's what she dressed up as to look like her character. Wow. I mean, we're talking about detail. We're talking about purple hair, a book just like the game. <laughs> like this guy, you know, this is a, you can roll, you can be a Japanese um, samurai type warrior. Mm -hmm. So this is the character. And this is the customer. <laughs> That's a real person? Dressed up like his character, yeah. Wow. He decorated the sword and the spell book and everything. That's really impressive. Get I mean. into the mass production. This is the one that, this is the craziest one. Let me show you here. This is her character. And they're using like a, she has, it's, it's like war paint. And this was her. <laughs> she actually painted herself up head to toe like her character. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of effort. Yeah. This well, one here was pretty good. She was, uh, she was, took a picture of herself and, you know, with her character with her horse in the game and then she dressed up like that. She got her white staff and she found a bear mask and her real horse. That for her looks picture. really close to, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, well, and, the people know, love their characters and people love, I mean, they really feel like it's part of them. I mean, it's not just a computer game, it's like part of their personality and their being. But I mean, it's, you know, 50-50 or maybe 60-40, but there's a lot of women I get a lot of people, like I have this one woman that buys from me all the time, and her name is Dottie, and she's like a 65-year-old grandmother, and she plays Ultimate Online, like, fanatically. But many hardcore gamers hate people like Kiblinger. He makes no apologies for what he does. Um, people argue that that sort of breaks the magical spear of the game, but, you know, in my opinion, it's a game, and, you know, why should a father of, a father of three kids, a four-year-old man, you know, neglect his family and his kids so he can, he can get that really nice sword and say in the magic spear of the game. Kiblinger is still successful, but it's getting harder. The gaming companies are cracking down in a variety of ways. What they'll do is they actually have in-game police and if they catch you participating in uh, virtual trading, they'll ban your account. Kiblinger also gets scammed by his customers and there's little he can do about it. Well, the main danger is the fraud because uh, what I do is it's all virtual, it's all done in the game world. If you buy a, some gold from me, my character meets your character in the game and hands you the virtual gold, and that's the transaction. So there's no proof of shipping, you know, there's no way to prove you delivered anything. Kiblinger tries to keep on the good side of the law, but it gives his accountant fits. If you have a business, you're supposed to keep track of your inventory. If your inventory depreciates, you know, you can deduct that from your taxes and we decided that there's really no way to decide if inventory depreciates or if it's even a real inventory. It's just not tangible. And there's a new seamy side to the online world. The game Second Life is just what it says, a place where your character lives a second life. But now what it's famous for is prostitution and gambling. So of course, they started creating casinos, brothels, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> and, you know, that's where all the money was. You know, people were paying for that. People weren't paying to come dance at your discotheque, but they were going to pay to have virtual sex with somebody. With all these threats on the horizon, Kiblinger is going down a new career path. He's planning to start pharmacy school in August at the University of Charleston. Kiblinger still loves his life, but he's no longer proud of what his job has become. You know, also, over the years, I haven't just spent my money frivolously and I've saved, so I still have a lot of freedom. I don't have to do anything, you know, but I, um, I just want something, you know, that my son can be proud of and that... Um, if someone asks me what I do for a living, I don't have to try to say, well, how much time you got? For West Virginia Public Broadcasting, this is Scott Finn reporting from Glade Springs. A University of Indiana study says the online trading of virtual goods is now a billion-dollar industry.